So there's interesting things that are going to take place during this period that we'll look at before we go that have to do with the procession of the equinoxes and what is actually aligning. Because there is a blast from the past that's coming in from the center of the Milky Way, where it's actually coming in from the parallel side through the center of the Milky Way. And it's going to interface directly through our sun with our Earth. And it's meant to hit the rods. And it's meant to knock the rods to actually make them spin. And it would spin one one way, one the other, and literally crack the plates of the equator. And I mean, something like that, there's no life left on the planet after something like that. And this is what the whole um, 2012 thing was about with the, the Mayan calendar and all of that. They saw an end time. They were warned about it. They were told they were going to be taken off planet uh, yeah, in the ancient days, the Mayans were, because they're connected with the Anu races. And, uh, you know, so they were told that you are children and will come and save you. That kind of thing, you know, when the end times come. This end time was known since, uh, like, the, the, this drama would unfold at this time since 22,326 BC because that was the last stellar activation cycle when the gates opened. They cannot do this when the gates are closed or it would just blow up the planet. So they had to wait till the next natural increment when the gates would open. And then they were going to go for the final you know, the final conflict drama, and that's what we're watching. So it's not a new drama. It's a, this is the end of a very old one. But it's, it, it isn't the greatest outcome that could have happened. It wasn't when the Voyager's books were written what was hoped would occur. But the choices that were made on this planet by the consciousness field here, they could have done more with that information. They didn't. No, I mean, I was the one with the little workshops, and the ones teaching the other paradigm had much bigger ones, and that was fine. It just meant, who was running which Merkaba, right? There was a lot of people running the anti-Christic Merkaba mechanics. Every person is a unit of energy on this planet. If half of those had spun their Merkabas this way, we might have held the Bridgestone Project. But it didn't. It was a choice that was made by the consciousness on the planet. And that's okay. You know, we're still standing. We'll still stand on the crest, even if only three people show up. You know, <laughs> it was never about how many. But it is as far as the grids go. The grids were oversaturated with the amount. And it was not just from here, it's also from other things that are being done, like HARP and various other machines that look like museums in France um, and things like that, that are actually machines that are set up to create very specific, repeated patterns of cycling pulses, right? Even sometimes there are like speed limits set on very busy highways to keep a certain pulse in the grids. That 55 is real popular. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, yeah. it is, there are people that consciously design these things in this, in this planetary culture. This isn't an accident. Nothing here happens by accident. And rarely does, is it anything to do with, uh, with what it appears to be. You know, that's just the way how the Illuminati game works here. But it's like, get over it. You know, we're on a, we're on a prison planet, and there's still an escape route. This is good, <laughs> right? One of the things that's important is when people are confronted with some of this information, it can be overwhelming. It's like, oh my God, I just want to be dead. You know, get me out of here. No, dead is not the answer. The worst thing a person can do is commit suicide right now because you will, your consciousness, if you drop the body on purpose, the consciousness will be stuck in this field. You want to be a ghost here while it goes down? Your body is your greatest gift right now because in your body, if you run it the right way, if you bring in the proper frequencies, it will be your salvation. It will actually anchor the crystal spiral because you have human codes, and that will bring you out of it. And you won't want you at, one, at that point. You won't feel like it was so horrible. You can deal with this. Honestly, you get over the shock, and you kind of go, "Ooh, well, I'm going to have a good day tomorrow anyway, right?" And you, you, it, it's an adjustment process when you're processing this kind of a, a huge amount of information that you've never heard before. But I, I just want to, you know, make it clear that suicide is not the answer. That's how to get stuck here. It's not worth doing. There's always a solution to get out. Your body will help you. You can anchor these frequencies in your body, and it will set your spirit free. So whenever, even if you do a normal, you know, bardo, and your body eventually dies, you won't be stuck in the 55 activation. But if you leave because you can't deal with the thought of having a 55 activation, you're going to get stuck in it. So that, I just wanted to say that because I know this can be intimidating to some people. All right. So anyway. <coughs> Now, excuse me. So what I want to do is get to the point where we talk a little bit about some of the things that do occur. So that big mystery about what's aligning with what? Oh, the galactic cord does something. Oh, that was in 1983. I mean, they're all like the internet. They're saying this, this group's saying this, this group's saying that. Everybody's trying to figure out what this big galactic core alignment is. Because honestly, in certain ways, if you lined it up, it actually happened somewhere in the 80s. That's not the alignment. It's not about that. It is about the rods and the chambers. 
and what they are doing. So we'll look at those in a minute. But this, this little time cycle here, it's about the spirals and how they're expanding out. And the simple thing that people really need to do is they need to decide which path you know, do they take this information seriously enough to say, well, better be better safe than sorry. You know what I mean? I'll try, I'll just, let's try that crystal spiral and see if I like it, you know. Because if you don't like it, you can always go back to the Mediterranean quite no problem. There's no, like, nobody holds you here, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a free will thing. Um, but anyway, I want to get to the, 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 the uh, graphs that have to do with a little bit on the body, too. But before that, I want to show you one more thing on, we're back up, way up at the top in our cosmic matrix, seeing our little VECA system with the black holes next to us that are trying to suck us in and that kind of thing. Up here, again, is the Aquarian matrix. That is where the Crystal River host groups are coming from, the, the Adashi adepts are coming from. And they are literally sending a frequency bridge down. It's actually acting like a respirator for this planet because it's coming down. It partially goes through the solar gates, but only partially. But it's coming down and it wraps almost like two currents that come down and they're meeting in the center, the core of the earth. If they weren't doing that in the core of the earth, there's a thing that happens in a solar system and it's just part of the natural mechanics of a solar system. If you have a sun that's pranaseed closes and it enters its bardo cycle, all of the planets or stars in that system that have the natural circulation with it will follow suit. They will all close their pranaseeds and they will all prepare to die together this planet was going to go into that. If that happened, all the gates would shut except the wormholes. And this is actually the cosmic respirator at the moment. There are two currents that are coming down. The, uh, what do they call that again? That's a big word. Ancest yeah, I trip over my tongue on that all the time. Ancest Ancestatia passage, they call it. And it is literally frequency currents that are coming down and forming a loop, coming in through the Earth's rods, I imagine, and literally holding the core open so the pranacy doesn't close, so the gates can still circulate energy, and so the host can go, and that will stay for 200 years. And when that pulls up, it, the pranacy is going to close, and the natural process of Bardo for the solar system is going to unfold. So whoever does stay here after the 200 years is going to have a very interesting evolutionary experience because there's going to be progressively more limited resources. You're going to watch ex species go extinct, at hugely fast rates because they want out, right? You know, they're just like, okay, out of here. We're leaving the planet. You're going to see large groups of people doing that, be it from earth changes or wars or whatever, because it's, it is the last call. But we've got 200 years before that point comes, fortunately. Now, what the solution is, is we need to reverse mutate as much as we can the light body structure and turn back on the spirit body, light body flows that have been blocked by these fields and get the junk DNA to reassemble so it can process the natural atomic and chemical changes that would occur in a body when it goes through the activating the Merkaba process because it is a biochemical process. The part in, in the process called fetal integration, that is when the consciousness from the spirit body begins to enter the fetal body in, in the baby, right, and starts to come in, it starts to bond the spirit body consciousness into the atoms. It's actually partially bonded into the atoms. It's called the jari. That's the part of the consciousness that actually is stuck with the atoms, the part of your living consciousness that forms your atoms. And that part, if the, it, when you go through a natural... Um, uh, bardo or ascension cycle. The, the jari is freed and the atom is able to uh, go through a biochemical process that involves an element or a transient element called celestiline. There's something called a celestiline wave. They used to, it has to do with the substances they used to call white powder and blue powder gold. All right, They're monoatomic, but they're natural monoatomic uh, atoms that just form. And they allow the body to become a superconductor where the angular rotation of particle spin on the atoms can shift they blend instead of annihilate with their antiparticle, their natural antiparticle, and they can go into ascension. So the biochemical processes that we're working on, they're directly connected to the DNA, directly connected to the epigenetic overlay that is triggering the DNA and telling it what it can and can't do. The techniques that we've been working with all along have progressively started with fixing the light body structure, then different layers of that, then what's called the crystal body structure that's part of the light body structure. Then we went into um, turning back on the core flows of the spirit body structure. Now we're working with what's called the Aje body structure, which is the part of this anatomy that brings those two together and allows the core flows to happen where you can actually go into orb. These little orbs we see in some of these photos and those kind of things, um, eventually we will be able to turn ourselves into those as a traveling medium. What you don't see with an orb, 
a natural orb would have its Merkaba fields moving around it, right? They're the parts you don't see, but you might get a photograph of the orb itself, right? You can also have orbs that are coming from the other system as well, where they are using the Death Star Merkaba, and you can't tell just by seeing the orb. You would have to be able to see the structures of its system and whether it had a poison apple-shaped uh, magnetic field around it or whether it had the natural thing that looks like a butterfly, which is the natural electromagnetic field. So anyway, when we're going to think about reverse mutating, it has to do with techniques, not techniques in a laboratory where you have somebody go play with your DNA. You play with your own DNA by literally, first of all, knowing what pieces of the anatomy you're trying to turn on and trying to heal, and working with them directly through certain breathing techniques, through certain uh, visualization exercises, through certain projection exercises. There are even certain movements and some, some uh, um, yoga moves that have that the uh, guardians refer to as logas because you also use energy work with the chakras with them and things. There are things to do that help the body to get into the space where these things can be repaired so you do become able to do these. We have structures in the body that have to do with, this. these were in the, some of the earlier teachings, it shows the density one body and this would be your density two body. If things were normal right now, say you could say this was your uh, earth body and this was your Terran body, Terran density two, right? But we actually have these fields uh, on each density level. This would be your soul level body, and this would be your incarnate level. If you had the density three one here, you'd have your over soul, then you would have your avatar, then you would have your rishi level. Now, to this is three dimensions here, this is three here. They each have their radial body structure. They are connected, but these have to be opened. So these become a six dimensional structure because the gates that we're going through require the six dimensional structure that actually has a 24 to 48 strand capacity, which is where the host comes in and those fancy Merkabas come in. But part of what this is, and, and we have the light body training courses that are in like the K23 manual and that stuff, they teach you how to open these things, how, like this part of how do you fix stuff. Right? And see, there's certain activations that will then, now, now this one's starting to get different shaped, right? You do certain other activations, you still have your spherical one up there, but this is starting to look like a flame, right? And then, when you finish those sets of activations, you've got your flame body activated. That's the sixth dimensional aspect, all right? Now, before we do this, we, there's one thing that can be done to link with that spiral when it's coming in, the crystal spiral when it's coming in. And at least then you're linked with that. But if you want to actually try to clear this, the other mutations out so you have a stronger field and so you don't get that metatronic pull as badly from your own DNA as the metatronic ones coming in, there, it, it's worth working with these technologies if you haven't done the activations before. And there's tons. There's a, there's a new corner set of, of techniques and activations where to start this process. But it is a process. And you don't have to, like, you know, bury yourself in it. But, you know, a couple times a week do that or, you know, do a little bit of that. And, try to work with the technologies, and also, you know, ask the guardians to say, you know, would you help me with this? Another thing I want to say about asking the guardians, I get a little tired of people saying, oh, I, the guardians attacked me, they came and they, they had astral sex with me. I said, hello, that is not the guardian. The guardian yeah. Alliance does not do that. That's not allowed. No sexual contact whatsoever. No abuse. If they don't yell at you, they don't tell you to do things, they don't say you have to, they don't say you must. If there's something they'd really like you to do because you think it's in your best interest, they'll request that you do it, but you can always say no. So if open rapport and communication does you know, come, there's all sorts of things out there calling themselves Guardian Alliance that are not. And you have to be careful with that. Our DNA right now, if you've done nothing with your DNA to get your line clearer, it runs two lines. It'll actually run three. You can look around a Christic one, a green one, or a red one, which means an Anunnaki one, a Drac one, or a Christic one. So we've all got you know, combinations of those codes. So anyway, I just wanted to add that in there because we get a little tired of hearing people you know, say, I'm going to go to the newspapers. It's like, well, good luck with that. But that's not us. You know what I mean? That's not our guys. They don't do that. In fact, we've taught against that, and we've taught to watch out for that for ages. If they were going to do that, they wouldn't be teaching not you know, to, to look out for that because people are doing it. Exactly. Yeah, there's been another thing that um, some well-meaning or not people have done where they'll say, oh, you know, I'll give you a session and I'll activate your 12-strand pattern for you. Oh, I'll, I'll activate. Uh-uh. There's nobody that can do it for you but you. It has to be you that does it. You have to choose. There are simple techniques. They're not hard. They're simple meditation techniques. It's really funny. When people first start them, they usually fall asleep halfway through the tape. 
or maybe a quarter of the way through the tape because the DNA it can't hold all the frequencies it brings in yet. But the more you use the tape, the more you'll find that you can stay awake during it, right? Even if you don't stay awake, you're still picking up some of the activation. The point where you can actually stay awake through the whole thing means you expanded the DNA activation level enough to hold the level of frequency that that tape was bringing in. All right, so as far as having other people fix you when it comes to DNA activation, you are much, much safer to just look at various techniques, feel which one feels better for you, and use that one and not have somebody else. Because you know what? Nobody else can activate your DNA for you, but they can transfer things into your DNA that weren't there otherwise. They can implant you that way, and some people are being used that way. Sometimes they don't even know it, that they're well-meaning. But where do they think? Like, what kind of ego does it take to say, I'm going to go activate your DNA for you? Hello? Get your ego in check. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway. Uh